Hey everyone, Paul Savage here. Today we're gonna to be tying up a summer intruder. A lot of you requested this one when I posted a picture of it. So we've got a size two aqua talon in the hook, in the hook, in the vise here. Um, if you do need any of the materials we're gonna be tying with today, many of them are available on Trey French's website. I have an affiliate link down below. Got the composite loop card, this exact hook, um, the saddle hackle that we're gonna be using today. It has this really cool, more dominating white effect on it. It's pretty awesome. So, so other than that, let's get right into it. First things first, we're gonna start a thread. Just add your eyes on, make sure they're centered. These are also on Jerry's website, 132nd, I believe. We're gonna work just above where the barb would have been. Now the fun begins. Take some Senyo's laser dub in fluorescent fuchsia. And we're also gonna mix in some prototype Aquaply stuff. Check that stuff out, huh? So that's just going over the laser dub. We're pulling it apart, placing it back on top of itself. First thing you can do is just rip off the end. I'm actually gonna clean that end off too. And we're gonna go right up the middle, cut it in half. There we go. Put that down for now. Little dubbing loop. Work our thread forward a little bit, and we're just gonna throw some wax on that. In goes the dubbing. Little fly, small amount of dubbing, three quarters of an inch, cut in half. I'm gonna spin that up, just so it comes tight on itself, and then just work that out, brush and foam. Jerry French explained this to me in a way that actually clicked for me. The whole point of this is you're trying to make a hackle that you can spin. Think of a saddle hackle, like the stem is extremely small. You don't want any built up material at the base of this really, do you? You want to essentially create a feather stem back here, and then all your materials here. And then this is a really easy place to add water and slick this guy back. Slims down the profile of that hackle that we're creating. And we can wrap those nice and tight, one right in front of each other. And then right now, it might look like nothing. However, when this dries out, because of how tightly you wrapped it, it's going to expand and it'll actually stay expanded with some profile. And you can see that here in a second, watch. Brush this out. See that? It's holding shape just like that. So I've got these kind of pink, peachy, pearlescent rubber legs, pretty cool. And I'm gonna tie them in the length of the body of the fly. So, boom, boom. One thing you wanna think about is just thread management. So three wraps there is fine, okay? That's all you need. And I'm gonna pull the two that were facing forward, back, one, two. Cut those slightly different lengths. One about a quarter of an inch short, one quarter of an inch longer. Now, same thing on the other side. Okay, beautiful. On top of that goes the Unreal Jungle Cock. Sorry, it's backwards. Unreal Jungle Cock. I'm going to pull two of these guys off. Those guys right there. Boom. Go ahead and tie that in right past the length of your dubbing. So, boom. Those are sticking out the back. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then now we are going to tie in a little bit of ostrich. So, I have this beautiful white ostrich from Aquaflies. We are going to take five fibers. That's it and they're naturally different lengths. Cool, perfect, good thing. Change them to be a little closer, but you don't want them all end at the same spot. It's actually what makes it look cool. So we're gonna take those, and we're gonna tie them in as the longest thing on the body right now. So just past the length of your rubber legs. Five more fibers, and this might be six. And then same thing on the other side. So that's going right over the JC, just slightly longer than our rubber legs. And we're gonna tie that in, one, two, just like the other side, and then work all of this forward, okay? So that is gonna create an equal sized body. One problem I used to have all the time when I first started tying intruders, I wanted a beautiful body going down the middle, like this guy here, check this out. So the body is all one size. What used to happen is that I have this huge slope here and then I go down to a little weaselly nothing. <laughs> so when you're tying in materials, make sure you're not just cutting them all off an eighth of an inch past where you tie them in. Tie them down the length of the body and you get that nice smooth, no transition point, no slope. Now I've just got some ribbing wire. 
That's getting tied in on the bottom, wrapped all the way back. Beautiful grizzly saddle hackle tip. Just one of them, skinny, right? We don't want a big fat one. Skinny as you can, as they come for this little tiny intruder. So we're gonna just massage those fibers back, pull them all so they're standing out straight. We are going to tie that in, fold back the fibers, tie it in by the tip, pull back the tip, capture the tip once, twice, you're done, work forward. And that's gonna make sure that never pulls out from the back end. Then we have that wire to make sure that it doesn't pull out any other place. This is like some vintage body braid. It's in silver. This just screams like OG intruder to me. This guy kind of tied original style with the, uh, you know, mono loop at the back. That is, uh, that's that body braid on the inside there. So I love the look of that silver chrome glowing from the inside. Capture that back. And then we are gonna make two tight wraps almost on top of that rear station and then start working forward just so it's seamless. There's no thread showing. And when you're just working forward, slightly overlapping, just slightly. And usually what I like to do is just work all the, almost all the way forward. And then I'll just go back ever so slightly over it. That'll close it down. And also it'll make it again, seamless when you open up the fly and look inside, there's no dead spot there. Just take your hackle pliers, grab onto your hackle, of course, start wrapping that thing. So the way I like to do this is kind of just roll it how I want it to land. So I want it to land straight out. I don't want it captured on itself. So we're going back to fully bugger days here. One right at the back full turn. And then we're just working forward and I'm just guiding it as I do. Then once I get to the front, I'm gonna do one additional turn in front of the last wrap. So you have one full turn in the back, going forward diagonally eighth of an inch apart, make it to the front, do one full turn in front of your last wrap. Just one, two, that's it. Go in. Trim the excess. Carefully just pull down tight on your thread. Hold that back. One, two, three. Wrap forward. See how we have a slope here. We're just gonna correct some of that. There we go. It's a lot less severe now. And it just makes it easier to, you know, wrap up our front station. If that's not sitting like this, the wraps won't be falling down on top of each other. We are putting our wire into our hackle pliers and we are wrapping the opposite direction. And that's just gonna capture down that saddle hackle, make sure that if it breaks at some point, the whole thing doesn't unravel. You get to the end of that, just capture that down. And then it's always a good idea to go back through with your bodkin and just pick out anything that got trapped. Now we're gonna create our forward station and forward hackle. So we are going to do that with some ice dub purple and some laser dub purple. The first thing we're gonna do is laser dub has the longer fibers in it pull out just about an inch of working material. Same thing as always, like Jerry French taught me in his early videos, pull the dubbing apart, lay it back on itself. So you're taking half on each side and rip off the ends like that. It's a little cleaner. And you go in, cut that in half. That just gets laid down right on top of each other and spread out over the forward station and forward hackle on our card. Now I'm gonna take some of our ice dub in purple the same thing, place that over the forward station. It's got two different dubbings in there. Jerry just told me what this stuff was called, what he wanted to call it, and I totally forgot. My bad. Um, but it's awesome. It's very cool. Like a firm, firm fiber. Some type of fiber. I'll get it eventually. That goes over the forward station. To that, we're gonna cut off a little half inch piece of purple predator wrap, spread that out, and that goes in 60 40. Cool, so that is all set for our forward station. You can see we still have some room actually for our forward hackle, and they'll just be all one thing. And this is um, looks like a lot here, but it's not. Once we pick that out, brush that out, that'll just be the perfect supportive shoulder 
um, for what we're gonna lay down here, which is just gonna be some white ostrich. So we're gonna follow up with what we have in the back. Beautiful, beautiful white ostrich plume, those. And I'm just gonna cut them at the stem. I got them pinched between my fingers like that. And then what I'm gonna cut off is probably all of that. And then just for a really smooth transfer, I like to grab it in a clip and then I'll lay that down. And I actually like the effect of a fuller amount of ostrich. So instead of just one layer, I'm actually do the same thing again. And I'm gonna just take those, place those down on top. And then now that they're in on top, I can spread them out more. I'm gonna take back to our laser dub in purple, the smallest amount, break it again. We want this really th thin and very short. Then what's gonna essentially happen with this is we're gonna stretch it out to be the size of the forward station and forward hackle. Very light covering. That is not building up bulk at all, just holding stuff down. Roll it in, push it in to the ostrich, to the other dubbing. That's just gonna lock everything in perfectly tight. Now, back over here, we're gonna make a five inch dubbing loop. A composite loop, just like that. Just get all your fingers under, under it and support it. And then the way you push it in is, for me, tilt it, forward goes in first, release the forward part of it, come to the back. Don't close it down until you're really happy with it. Now, I'm really happy with that. I think that looks awesome. So I'm going to spin that up one finger at the back, spin, spin. I'm just watching it and feeling it, the tension. And also when it starts folding back on itself all the way up there, it's good. Go in, pick that out with integrity. Take the wire brush. I'm just gonna fold this all back. Thin thread that you can actually wrap tightly instead of it just being all loose on top of each other. Okay, we're gonna begin work wrapping this. Full wrap right in front of our saddle hackle that we palmered up and then take the rest of these wraps right in front of each other. Nice and tight, controlled. And we're just gonna capture this down right behind our little dumbbell eyes. I just like to put it in there, capture it once, and then just pull it down tight. And we're just doing one, two, three, and then we're gonna, gonna come in front of the eyes and hang our thread down. Gives us some space here so we don't cut our main thread. Cut that, and we're closed off. So right now, it's all compressed because we have the water in there, but go through start by brushing it back forward. Spin it around, be pretty rough on it. And you could see, you know, if you did a good job of wrapping it tightly and obviously with water, if as you're brushing it forward like this, it's not sliding off of where you started it, it should be sticking right there. And <laughs> look at that volume. I mean, that is just so cool. The way that supports that. And like I said, see how the inside Palmer and Hackle is actually supporting the supportive shoulder pressed down, which is okay. That's a good look too sometimes, but this is just kind of cool. And that is like the epitome of an intruder. I think the way it's meant to be tied. I'm going to take our saddle hackle, got from uh, Jerry French's website, and we're going to take one from the left, left side, and right side. So those are our matching feathers that I picked out. I watched Jerry French do this with a camo squid. He left some of the down we're gonna do it like that. So you want this, in my mind, to be not the longest thing on the fly, at least in this specific situation, but about touching down halfway over your rear station. Okay, so it's kind of like a shell casing. I'm just gonna pluck some of the unnecessary fluff off. Leave some of that in there. And the way I like to do that is just put it stem through the eye of the hook. Capture that down. Go see where that one's hitting. Just capturing it down slightly longer than we want it to sit ultimately, and then pulling it to the matching length. Something like that. And capture them down. Two tight wraps. Go in and just pull the stems back out the other way, nice and tight. Use my nail and create a really stiff edge there. Now, whip finish, UV resin, varnish, whatever you want. A few small drops of UV resin. There we go. Cure that. There you go. 
you are done my friend thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe down below watch more videos somewhere in this screen <laughs> and i'll see you in the next one later